coming up on today's show. Chevrolet and General Motors ask owners of 2017 through 2019 Bolt EVs, which had been part of its previous recall campaign, to address battery fire concerns to park outside and not charge overnight after cars that had received the most recent software update still caught fire. Tesla pushes its FSD V9 to beta testers and it looks pretty impressive. And Rivian announces that the launch date for the R1T and R1S will be pushed back again, this time to September. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to TEN, Transport Evolved News. It is good to be back after my week on the road driving Winter's Bolt EV across an entire continent. Next week, it's Winter's turn to do the same thing in a Tesla Model 3. So safe travels to Winter and Owen. This show is sponsored by the Electric Auto Association. Stick around until the end of the show to find out how joining the EAA can help you finance your own clean energy or transportation purchases. Given I spent the last week driving a Bolt EV across the US and I happen to own two Bolts, we're starting today with a story that I'm going to admit has caused quite a lot of discussion offline in the Gordon Bloomfield household. Earlier this year, GM rolled out a new software update for 2017 through some 2019 Chevrolet Bolt EVs designed to prevent their battery packs from entering into thermal runaway conditions and catching fire. However, after two Bolt EVs, one belonging to a Vermont politician, caught fire after having the software update applied, GM is now asking owners to not park indoors and to not leave their cars charging overnight out of, quote, an abundance of caution. With only two possible routes left that I can see, mass buyback or a fleet-wide battery replacement similar to that happening for the Hyundai Kona EV, I think time is running out for GM and its battery supplier, LG Energy. Watch this space and the live stream we did this week on it. The Lightyear One, a super sleek aerodynamic solar car designed by a Dutch company founded by alumni of solar team Eindhoven, has managed to drive an astounding 710 kilometers, 441 miles, using just 60 kilowatt hours of electricity. The feat, which took place at the Aldenhoven Testing Center in Germany, saw the car drive for more than nine hours around a closed test track. And while this kind of long distance feat is normally achieved by a car driving at stupidly low speeds, the average speed of the Lightyear One during this test was in a reasonably acceptable 85 kilometers per hour, which is 52 miles per hour, or just below the average speed limit for most rural roads in Europe. The four seat EV is due to go on sale in the first half of next year, but it won't be cheap. After a pretty long wait and several pushbacks in its planned launch, Tesla has pushed its full self-driving V9 beta software to cars belonging to customers signed up to its beta software test program. Capable of a higher level of autonomous vehicle assistance than ever before, Tesla's V9 FSD system makes use of Tesla's new Tesla Vision software, and we've already seen examples of the system online tracking roundabouts, gravel tracks, highways, surface streets, and country roads. While it is the closest FSD has been to autonomous operation, Tesla is still very explicit about the system, warning drivers to pay attention at all times and be ready to take over as required. Because of the rules associated with Tesla's beta program, not everyone who's taking part is able to share their experiences publicly, but thanks to Dirty Tesla on YouTube for allowing us to share their footage here. You rock. For a couple of years now, you've been able to get your hands on an all-electric Harley-Davidson in the form of the Livewire, a motorcycle that's not only marked the brand's entry into the electric motorcycle world, but also spawned the Livewire sub-brand. This week, the company launched a new Livewire variant, the Livewire One. With roughly the same specs as its predecessor, the Livewire, this new bike starts from an MSRP $1 shy of $22,000, nearly $10,000 less than the OG Livewire. That's still a lot of cash for an electric motorcycle, even after you factor in a $2,500 possible dollar federal tax credit in the US, but it does at least suggest that Harley-Davidson has some economies of scale that can drop the sticker price. We're going to try and get our hands on one to ride, and when we do, we'll of course share the review here. 
U.S. President Joe Biden has signed a new executive order that tackles right to repair concerns head on, directing the Federal Trade Commission to issue rules preventing manufacturers from imposing restrictions on independent device repair shops and DIY repairers. While most outlets have focused on the impact that this would have on tech companies known for their restrictive practices, Apple, I'm looking at you, it could also make it easier for electric car owners to keep their vehicles on the road. As I'm sure you know, many automakers, including Tesla, are anti-right to repair, and if this FTC issues new rules on the matter, it could force them to open up both user manuals and component specifications to lay the path for more affordable repairs and pattern parts. How would you feel if an independent review site like Yelp was acquired by a large fast food chain like McDonald's? You'd likely feel that Yelp would lose its impartiality, right? Well, in the plug-in vehicle world, that's exactly what's happened. Except it's not McDonald's and Yelp, but rather US charging provider EVgo and Recargo, the latter being the company that owns PlugShare, a global EV charging site database that's earned a reputation for being reliable and impartial. EVgo says that the acquisition, worth $25 million, will help it grow the EV driver base and enhance the customer experience. Given EVgo is already in hot water over some of its charging policies, including banning any modified or DIY EVs from its network, I can't see PlugShare remaining impartial. And that, frankly, is sad. Chinese automaker NIO, which has managed to make electric vehicle battery swapping a successful part of its business model, has said it will dramatically expand the number of battery swap stations it operates worldwide. The announcement, made during last week's Power Day event in Shanghai, will see NIO deploy an additional 4,000 battery swap stations worldwide in the next four years across multiple continents. So far, NIO says it's successfully completed 2.9 million battery swap sessions, as well as 600,000 valet-operated click-for-power operations, where a NIO service specialist comes to pick up your car to take it to be recharged. With NIO already in Europe and wanting to launch in the US, this is certainly one to watch. Electrify America announced this week that it would expand the size of its current network in the US by 2025, growing the number of locations served by Electrify America from 800 to 1,700 and the number of charging stalls from 3,500 to 9,500. The expansion was made possible by a larger-than-expected cash injection from Volkswagen, who was originally forced by the courts in the US to put more than $2 billion into the company as penance for Dieselgate in the US. With Electrify America quickly becoming one of the most reliable non-Tesla networks in the US, Volkswagen is also rumored to be looking for partners to join in and help expand the network even further, in a move which could see EA become jointly owned by many different OEMs. SPACs, special purpose acquisition companies, have had their biggest year to date, with more companies than ever before falling over themselves to get SPACs to gain access to the stock market. And frankly, we've lost count of how many automakers and infrastructure companies have paired up with SPACs this year to go public. Now, though, there's a new one to add to the list, Aurora, an autonomous vehicle startup founded by former Google self-driving expert Chris Urmson. The company is set to merge with reInvent Technology Partners in a deal that's worth 2.5 billion US dollars in cash, and it will see Aurora gain extra investment to help it bring its autonomous vehicles to market. Right now, it has partnerships with Toyota, Uber, Volvo, and Packard. At the start of this year, we were all hopeful that Rivian would begin deliveries of its R1T electric pickup this June. But that launch was pushed back to July. With the launch of the R1S electric SUV scheduled to happen a few weeks later, sometime in August, we've been curious if it would happen. This week, however, we learned that Rivian has pushed its launch plans back a little further, with initial deliveries of the R1T due to take place in September. Although frustrating for any reservation holder, especially those who paid extra for a launch edition vehicle, it's worth noting that this delay is being blamed on the current semiconductor shortage, something that also pushed back the Canadian launch of the ID4. It's frustrating for sure, but at least it's not a huge delay. And now it's time for short shorts. 
During a court appearance defending his role in Tesla's acquisition of SolarCity in 2016, Elon Musk has confirmed that Tesla Powerwall demand far exceeds supply. Right now, he says it has 80,000 orders for units, but can't make more than 35,000 this year due to chip shortages. The Port of San Diego and Crowley Maritime Corporation have announced the port will soon be home to an all-electric tugboat called the Crowley E. Wolf. It will offer 70 tonnes of bollard pull and go into service by mid-2023. Audi has confirmed that the first car to be produced under its mysterious all-electric Project Artemis will be revealed at the IAA 2021 in Frankfurt this September. Audi says Project Artemis will help shape the brand's transition to zero emissions. Tesla has yet again increased pricings for its vehicles. This time, it's the long-range versions of the new Tesla Model S and Tesla Model X, both of which get a $5,000 price hike. You now have to pay shy of 85 grand to get a Model S. The European Union has proposed an effective ban on all new fossil fuel car sales from 2035 onwards by imposing a 100% cut in CO2 emissions from new vehicles by the same date. Competition is hotting up as multiple different battery suppliers, including Samsung SDI and LG Energy, line up to become battery cell suppliers and partners to Tesla. Both companies have already begun building 4680 format cells in order to court Tesla. Volkswagen has announced a brand new strategy for the future of the brand that will further consolidate its electric vehicle development into a single platform called the Scalable Systems Platform, or SSP for short. It wants to then sell that platform to rival automakers. Ford has announced that it is working to address reported issues with the Mustang Mark E overheating from high power regenerative braking after multiple Norwegian Mark E owners reported their cars became inoperable after descending the, the famous and steep Eagle Road in Norway. Lucid has announced details of its new mobile service program ahead of the official launch of the Air Sedan later this year. Like Tesla's mobile service ranges, Lucid hopes that the majority of its service activity can happen remotely at locations that are convenient to its customers. Tier 1 parts supplier Bosch has unveiled a brand new continuously variable transmission for electric vehicles. This electronically controlled CVT is a long way from the DAF variomatics of old and says Bosch could improve performance and efficiency. Volkswagen has already committed to building six new gigafactories to produce battery cells for its upcoming range of electric vehicles, two of which have already begun construction. But now the company has announced a new one is about to begin construction in Spain. Zero Motorcycles has revealed the FXE Electric a new highway-capable two-wheeler designed for commuters. Sharing some of the DNA with the FX, the FXE is designed to be sleek, sophisticated and affordable, with a sub $12,000 price tag. Mercedes-Benz is recalling its EQC electric SUV in parts of Europe after it was discovered that some vehicles may have an incorrectly sealed battery box. This can lead to additional moisture entering into the pack and causing corrosion, which leads to battery failures. GM has announced an expansion to its Altium Charge 360 service that will see it launch a fleet charging service designed to help fleet customers make the transition to electric. It will offer fleet and facility management tools based on GM's OnStar. The world's first all-metal 3D printed bridge has opened in Amsterdam. While I know this isn't technically transportation, especially as it's a pedestrian bridge, 3D printing technology could help many countries, including the US, quickly upgrade aging infrastructure. GM says it will source the lithium it uses for its Altium-based battery systems from the US using closed-loop processes and direct extractions that it says will result in a lower carbon dioxide emissions. It's going to use lithium for the Salton Sea geothermal field in California. It's official, the next 007 film, No Time to Die, will feature James Bond driving the upcoming Aston Martin Valhalla. It's a plug-in hybrid with a V8 and twin electric motors, and is a looker, but really it is time to go all electric, Aston. BYD, the Chinese company that's helping to revolutionize the electric bus market in the US, is fighting a 2020 law that means, due to Chinese parent company, it can't get a cut of the billions of dollars of money available to help electrify the US fleet. Its workforce, fully unionized, could help bargain for a change of rules. Hyundai is about to begin testing a level 4 autonomous shuttle bus service in Sijong smart city of South Korea. Called the Robo Shuttle, it will operate along a 6.1-kilometer 
3.8-mile route. A chain of filling stations in the US South is pushing regulators to change the rules concerning electricity pricing so that they can make a profit on electric car charging stations. Right now, race-tracked petroleum says it can't sell electrons for more than it buys them. Greenland has acted to suspend all oil exploration in its seas. At the moment, there are no active oil or gas fields in its waters, but the waters around Greenland are believed to contain 17.5 billion barrels of crude oil. Greenland says it takes the climate crisis seriously. Well done, Greenland. As the Tesla Cybertruck heads towards production, Elon Musk has confirmed how the Cybertruck's doors will operate. When it was first launched, it had hidden door handles, but now Musk confirms it will have none. Instead, the doors will automatically open, just like they do for Model S and X. As part of its appearance at the Goodwood Festival of Speed this week, Ford unveiled what it's called the Mustang Mark E O GT, a fragrance designed for Mustang Mark E GT fans who miss the smell of petrol. Yes, it was just a marketing gag. No, it's not entering into production. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Swedish electric airplane manufacturer Hart Aerospace, which is in the process of bringing its ES-19 electric airplane to market, has announced that it's received two major orders that could help it cement a commanding position in the aviation industry. United Airlines and Mesa Air Group have both signed purchase agreements for as many as 100 ES-19s each, allowing each carrier to go all-electric for regional flights. The ES-19 is a four-engine turboprop capable of flying up to 250 miles, 400 kilometers per charge, and, as the name suggests, will seat 19 passengers. The ES-19 isn't expected to go into series production until 2026, but this really does show how eager some airlines are to go all-electric when possible. And finally, if you've made any kind of long-distance trip in an electric car, you'll know how far you can travel per charge really does depend on the weather, your driving style, and how the car is set up, as well as a host of other things. Hone your driving style, and most modern EVs can get between 3 and 4 miles of range per kilowatt hour of electricity. But in the UK this week, Fergal McGrath, Kevin Brooker, and BBC journalist Paul Clinton drove a Ford Mustang Mark E from John O'Groats to Land's End, setting a new record-breaking efficiency of 6.54 miles per kilowatt hour over the 840-mile, 1,352-kilometer route, expanding range per charge of their Mustang Mark E to over 500 miles, 804 kilometers per charge of its 88-kilowatt-hour battery pack. I wonder how long it would take them to cross the US. And on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's show. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric cars today. The EAA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make the switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator, and it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. And if you become a member, you'll gain access to a new clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EAA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. You can find out more by heading to electricauto.org. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel, hitting that bell, and doing the same to our other two channels as well. That's Transport Evolved Take Two and Transport Evolved Shorts. We'd also love you to support us through Patreon or Ko-fi if you're so inclined. And don't forget that you can buy our own TE swag over at our Redbubble store. The link is below. And if you're feeling chatty, drop by our free to join Discord chat room. I or someone else from the team will be back soon with more video goodness. But until next time, thanks for joining me. And keep evolving.